Everybody. Welcome to In Real Lore. My name is Sonam and on this podcast, my lifelong geek husband Nick tries to explain the lore behind popular stories to me. I am told today we are discussing League of Legends. All right, Nick, uh, take it away. Actually, never mind. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> uh, for those who want to support us, just a reminder, you can do so on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash in real lore. We have a website inreallore.com and please subscribe and follow to us on whatever platform you listen to us on. All right, Nick, take us away. So I wanted to go over the lore of League of Legends, mostly because Worlds had just finished up um, as a recording the Saturday before we dropped this episode. And it goes to show how large League has gotten where there is million dollar pop per, um prize pot that is there and it's got a huge following to it and i want to kind of explore where that lore comes from and give you an idea of what it is yeah i i thought league was wow for a bit <laughs> until you showed me and then you showed me the video game and then i didn't realize it was little itty bitty men like running around on a screen i always thought it was i mean you know i'm taking this from my arcane watchings but i was really underwhelmed with what i saw when you showed me the uh, the live stream so to tell you what's kind of funny about you thinking it's wow league comes from wow so when I was doing the thumbnail for this, I pretty much like used a, a folder called WoW because I forgot it was League of Legends. So what happened? It was actually Warcraft 3, not WoW itself. Okay. So World of Warcraft is the multiplayer online version of the game. Warcraft 3 was a RTS um, that you would basically like StarCraft, if you remember that, right? No, but what's an RTS? RTS is uh, armies and you're building buildings and you're trying okay. to control a bunch of things all very rapidly. Right. So I'm not super wrong. They are they are inter- interrelated to some degree. There was a game type in Warcraft 3 called Defense of the Ancients, Dota, which eventually made its own video game called Dota. Aren't the- there Dota um aren't there Dota tournaments too? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I, actually, I remember I remember A very old yeah. friend of mine is a uh, caster for that. Okay. Um he actually does the commentary for these big events for Dota. But the makers of League of Legends saw that that particular game type and they want to make their own game and spawned it League of Legends based off of that in 2009. Okay. So it came from Warcraft in any way. Cool, so, so it's totally of, right. You were kind of right. <laughs> okay. Uh, to give a bit of an idea of what League of Legends is, uh, League of Legends is a multiplayer online battle arena. What it is is... It's a MOBA. It's a that's MOBA. What, that's what you told me. <laughs> it is a MOBA. You have five players on each side uh, attempting to get themselves across the map destroy specific towers in the way that are defending the other side and destroy the base on the other side. Like you capture have the flag? Kind of similar, right. but you're not trying to get back to your own base. You're just yeah, trying yeah. to get to the other side and destroy their side. Uh, you have small minions that kind of go along the different lanes that make their way to the other side. These are just, they're chaff, but they're there for you to kill for on the other side. But each player has their own specific champion. They are they're like a unique character with unique skill sets. So these all like the main characters in Arcane, like Vi and uh, yes. I mean, uh, my only like my only knowledge of League of Legends was Arcane, and I, I only watched it because it was so well done. Yes. Yeah. It's, it broke the video game adaptation curse because most video game adaptations were are trash. Yeah. No, I'm I'm pretty excited for season two. Yeah. So when they were making the game. Uh, they wanted to make sure that when you were playing your champion, you could easily distinguish who you were and who the enemy was and what they do. So when you saw a girl with pink hair coming across the map with big gloves, you Vi. knew... Vi. No, not Vi. What Vi. Kind of... Yeah, yes, it is Vi. Yeah, it is yeah, Vi. Yeah. You knew that she was going to get close to you and she was going to fist you. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to beat you. If you saw a blue-haired girl running around with a minigun. She's going to shoot you. She's going to shoot you. And she's going to have a giant rocket. Probably Jinx. Yeah, yeah. Or if you see someone with a top cap, like a top hat and a corset. So all Yo, these... is there Heimerdinger? Yes, Heimerdinger yes. is one. Yes! So if you saw the little... The, the little guy with orange <laughs> hair on a 
giant T mechanical T Rex oh, with rockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some of the champions are very different from what they originally were uh, in the the game from this era, mostly because when they started off League, they didn't have any real lore to it. The idea behind it was it was a way for different nations in a world to reconcile without war. So they would have one side or the other fight each other, and whoever won, won that disagreement. Like in the story of League? The right? original story. Okay. And this was how everything was kind of settled. In 2014, they decided to scrap that entire lore and start writing from the beginning. And they hired writers, because originally, writers didn't... They didn't have any writers. It was only the designers. So the people that made the design for, like, Vi made a small blurb or something to kind of explain them and then give some voice lines to them. After 2014, they actually hired a notable 40K writer uh, known for some terrifying things like the Damon Kolbaba and the really good Last Church. Just going to totally pretend like I know what that is. Oh, you don't I'm just gonna. T- I'm tabling that. That's all right. I don't need to know. <laughs> you don't want to know about Damon Cole, though. Um, it's edgy. But they hired him to, uh, in order to build out the lore and uh, give out these characters and build a world around them. So that way they could start integrating more things into it. So they write, wrote things like with Vi. Um, she has this is like quick blurb from mm-hmm. her blurb or like entire story that they wrote. Vi remembers little of her childhood in Zon. What she does remember, she wishes she didn't. Running with the sump snipe gangs, she quickly learned to use her wits as well as her fists to survive. Everyone who encountered Vi knew she could talk or punch her way out of trouble. More often than not, she chose the latter. Yeah. And this is just the quick introduction of who who she is. And they built this over and then they gave more voice lines that are integrated with that lore, their background and their history. Um, And in doing so, they also made specific characters interact with one another when they see each other on the other side. So there is a particular character named Fiddlesticks, who looks like a terrifying scarecrow monster. But what he does is he feeds off the fear and paranoia of those around him and in order to psychologically break them and hunt them. But when he meets Jinx in the in the field, essentially, he goes, Jinx, all your fault, all your fault. Hmm. Okay. So how does that translate into the actual game? Or is this just a, like the story behind the game? This is the story behind the game. Okay. So instead of simply making the game... So I'm thinking, how help, in the world does like one throw out insults and actually damage the other player in a It's mobile. not insults. It's just little, like, snippets and interactions that yeah, make yeah. it more fl- flushed out. Okay. Because, as well, the way they were writing the story originally made it very limiting with designs. They could only do so much if they were just going off of this thing. So they just said, screw it, the game is what the game is. We will make characters however we want, and we can put them in our world wherever we want them to. Okay. And have specific nations and cultures that these characters can come up from. League has something like 150 champions or something along those lines at this point. Wow. So we only saw like a, a select few and like very in select the few. adaptation. Eh? Because those are the ones that are associated with Piltover and Zaun. Only. Okay. You get some. Are there more, are there more cities? <laughs> there is a lot more. I remember as you were prepping this uh, as you were prepping this podcast I saw the Wikipedia page and I ran away <laughs> yeah it's it's they've done a lot of work for it but that's why something like Arcane can come out and be good is because they've done the legwork and they have this world already pre-built out yeah yeah I found Piltover and Zon really cool and a really cool dichotomy of like you know the uber rich the really well off um, you know using technology for well for quote unquote good although you know there were a lot of other underlying things going on then you had Zon the, like a little bit of like the it, the ghetto but still had the tech but it was in more of like I don't know I just I felt like it was a bit more more, um, you know, everyone, it was kind of an everyone for themselves, right? And then they were poisoned. They had all these other things going through there and a sickness going through it, but it was kind of agreed upon by
my two sides that you know this would be okay and the status it was just it was weird you know but it's one of those typical sci-fi type stories right and i enjoyed the storyline but uh yeah so yeah. the way that they ended up building room terra specifically was so that way they could have everything kind of existing in this world so you have room a typical, terra? so room terra is the name of the world that it exists in, okay. that league of legends lives in, and these all these characters exist in they have different styles to the different regions so it enables a lot of different variety in terms of characters as well as stories so with piltover and zon you have a little bit more sci-fi technology related but yeah. it's very steampunk and very chempunk uh, is the style that those two are typically associated Chem with. Punk. So I think the first time I've heard that name. It's a very, yeah, it's a very different name, but it's using chemicals in order to augment bodies. Oh man, that's my jam. So, Love that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically like what they were doing with the Shimmer, augmenting themselves to be stronger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but it's deteriorating. Them but the Shimmer the was the mutating agent, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Shimmer yeah. enables uh, mutagenic changes. So yeah. you... you they want to build the world out a bit more so they could do that. So they have that style. They also have more Lovecraftian horror. They have very Asian-themed areas. Interesting. They have Vikings. I thought, I thought I watched the entire, like, world of League of Legends, but it's so much bigger. No. So Piltover and Zon is a very, very tiny, tiny little corner of it. Okay. Um, it is, and I was going to, Maybe explain it. I'll explain it a little bit okay. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll explain a bit more of the idea of Rune Terra itself, being it is own separate world. So, Rune Terra means magic world. So, magic suffuses Rune Terra at a fundamental level. So, you have mages, you have magical spirits, you have uh, people that can use magic, or people that can then augment technology with magic, like you saw in Arcane. Mm -hmm. And it has all these different things. And there are two different main realms to it. There is the material realm, which is where all the people usually come from. So where Piltover and Zon is, and that is the, the planet. There is also the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm is separated with separate regions in each individual place. So there is a place called Bandal City that is in the spiritual realm. And what? The actual heck? <laughs> you've lost me. Like, are, are you serious? Like, this? yes. Okay, well, now I'm going to re reference Tunic because if you've played Tunic, which you have, because I know you watched me play it, you know how you had the like the daytime realm and then you had the nighttime spiritual realm? So it right? is. Right? Like, I don't know. Kind of like that, except it, there's, there, if you are a spirit, you can travel between the material realm and the spirit okay. realm. If you're a mortal, so just a regular person, mm -hmm. you can only reach the spiritual realm either by being uh, powerful in spiritual magic or by being near death. Okay. So there's different areas in the spiritual realm. Bandle City is one I'm going to mention because that is where Heimerdinger is actually from. Heimerdinger! And that is actually an entire world, uh, or <laughs> the city is basically all his people, yours. Wow. Oh, so they're, man. I can just picture many Heimerdingers running around. <laughs> they're innately spiritual beings, and I'll yeah. uh, explain a little bit later because I have a little bit on them. Um, yeah. And like I said, there is magic in this. So it defines all the cultures and how each one interacts. Um, so there is a place called Demacia, which is very much a, like sword and sorcery or like just sword fantasy like they do not like mages mm -hmm. they hate them if someone is a mage they will lock them up and put them in the dungeons forever what's a mage someone who uses magic <laughs> all right cool 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 and innately someone yeah, yeah. who innately can use magic okay you notice in arcane peltover was built by people that were running from mages during a uh, yeah. During a war called the the Rune Wars yeah, that yeah. had destroyed continents essentially. Yeah. Um, so they had made the edict that no one can use magic within the city. But wasn't Chase? He yes. got to Piltover because of magic. So he was exploring mountains with his mother. Yeah. yeah. Got lost, and he was able to get back and saved by yeah. a mage, which is yeah. why he was very interested in magic in general because he could see the 
the utility of it for good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beings are born with varying degrees of magical in like ability to mm-hmm. them. Uh, runes enable them to actually manifest that magic in different ways. So in Arcane, they were using the the hex cores, the little balls. Yep. Yeah. But they were using runes uh, in specific orientations to do. The, using technology to use that magic for whatever they wanted to use it mm-hmm. for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nope. I have no idea what a rune is. <laughs> it's just a rune is like A, B, C, except not A, B, C. It's just a di- like a different. So how do you script. use that to use magic? Oh, you're just you're saying a script to use yeah. magic. Okay. Yeah, it's like saying a magic spell. All right. Cool. Alakazam. Okay, that I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there are multiple areas in Runeterra uh, that have their own unique flavor and how everything interacts with them. So you have, of course, Piltover and Zaun, which are that specific style to it. The Kempunk, solar, um, steampunk, technology, progress. Cool Runeterra. stuff, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Love it. Um, you have... Demacia, which I was mentioning a little bit before, it is a very lawful nation, but they are all about uh, martial um, martial prowess, mm-hmm. not through any kind of magic, but through fighting. And the people in this area are a little bit more stronger than what most people can be. A particular um, champion in a lot of the cinematics that you put up, because Riot likes to put out cinematics for... League of Legends. Okay. That's right. Uh, he, his name's Gorin, but you can see him training in one of the cinematics by dragging a 30 foot stall, tall statue through a field. So he's just... Hercules. A, he's Hercules. He's just a big, strong man, but he's pulling it faster than everyone else. The yeah. regular soldiers are pulling it, but he's pulling it faster. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they are completely opposed to use of magic like i mentioned before they mm-hmm. will imprison people and that has a lot of interactions between different characters from demacia there is one named i think her name is lux um she is a maid she hides her use of magic but she is seeking to try and change the attitudes of demacia's towards magic to something more good there's also a character named silas who has been imprisoned who is a mage who just wants to tear down everything that Demacia is Mm -hmm. because it has imprisoned him for being something that he has no control over. Yeah, yeah. You also have Ionia, which is the very (laughs) Asian-themed. What do you mean by very (laughs) Asian-themed? Uh, you have a lot of... Are you thinking Japanese influence? Are you thinking, like, Chinese influence? Like, Korean? Yes. Like... Yes. Yeah, all of it? Yes. You get the pagodas or the pagodas, there's right? There's pagodas. There's you the have, little like, villages, beautiful... the rice do have, paddies. Do you have Zen gardens? There's Zen gardens. Yes. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot of ninjas, but there's... The... Of course they're ninjas. I feel like that's so stereotypical. It's very stereotypical. I don't know how I'd feel about that. <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Asian by any means. At least I'm not that type of Asian. Um, but I, f- I feel like Southern. I'd be. I know. I heard. I feel like I'd be a little offended. In Ionia, the magic is a little more stronger, and there's a lot more connections. People um, feel more in tuned with nature, and you'll notice this in a lot of cinematics that's associated with it. They associate with the spirits a lot more in this area and commune with them a lot easier in Ionia than they do in the other regions. Where's Ionia again? Ionia... Like, it's in the... Uh, it's in Runeterra. It's okay, the normal Okay, okay. And it's not Piltover and Zion. Zon. Zon, sorry. Yeah, and okay, it's cool. not Demacia. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think about world. Okay. the world, Demacia yeah. is here, Piltover's here, Ionia is over here Okay. Uh, and for those of you who can't see... My uh, lovely husband. Have, he is saying everything is within a 300... <laughs> we're kidding. I'm just going to cut that <laughs> off. You can cut that off. <laughs> Not cutting that. Um, another area that you have is someplace called Bilgewater. It is uh, a major port city in between Ionia and where Piltover is. Mm-hmm. And it is a pirate cove. Okay, cool. Run by a syndicate of criminals and pirates is just... Gets you all of that fun pirate stuff. So you have someone like Miss Fortune, who's who is like a femme fatale, really sexy, lucky kind of thing. 
Yeah, that's the design of the really character. Really sexy, lucky kind of thing. <laughs> uh, you also I have, saw your face as you said that. You have other characters. It's like you're talking about Jessica Rabbit at this. Like. Cutting a bit of this. Um, you have characters like uh, that. Why you do you keep cutting me out? I'm not cutting all of you out. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot of um, pirate theme stuff. So people are using muskets and they are using like cards as part of their magic yeah, as they're yeah. doing different pieces. It reminds me of uh, that main port of Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Where they all come together. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. what it's called, but I think you guys oh, know what I'm referencing. Tortuga? Yeah, Tortuga. Yes. This reminds me of Tortuga. Very much like Tortuga. Yeah, I'm just picturing a Jack Sparrow running around. <laughs> uh, another area that is to the far north is called um, Freyjord. I'm probably saying that wrong. Sounds Swedish. It's Vikings. Yeah, yeah, cool. You have Vikings up there, and, like, one of the main characters that is up there is, like, a human bear person. Okay. Um, Sasquatch? Kind of, yeah. Um, But they have a lot of themes around Vikings. So you have... And you have very Swedish themes, too. So one of the characters that's from there is this big burly dude with a big shield and a big mustache and a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing how to train a dragon like the dad. <laughs> yeah! He actually kind of looks like him. He's so cute I think he's and bald. Sweet. I think yeah. he's bald but he's just a big dude and he goes knocks his shield and yeah, he's like, yeah. hey, good job. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm protecting you. Um, so you have a lot of characters around that area. There is another place called Noxia or Noxus. One of those. It sounds obnoxious. No, uh, it is very much a a expansionist empire. They believe in a meritocracy. If you can fight and you are willing to fight and put yourself to the top, you will be above all else. If you remember from Arcane. Mel and Mel's mom are from Noxus. Oh, okay. That So now that makes more sense. I wish I knew that when I was watching the show. They give it a bit of an explanation, yeah. but one of the paintings she's doing is yeah. of the Noxian capital. It's this very big, brutal style looking citadel. And that's where a lot of... Uh, are like they very warrior-like? From. Extremely warrior-like. Yeah. Like I said, That's it's like... Spartan-like, almost. Top dog wins. Yeah. Top dog will be able to win. There is a cinematic that's of a Noxian... Or Noxus. I, I don't know what the best word way of saying this. Um, but it's a war band that actually ended up taking over a kingdom. And they say, give it... Like, they bring in this big pot of metal like hot metal Mm -hmm. they bring it into the throne room of this king after having taken the city they put it down in front of him and they say put your crown in there it is a pot full of crowns that they have melted down and they say put your crown in there and he's like I will like I won't give up for this and like um he, his crown falls off and he's trying to fight back and a slave that was working with him runs over grabs the crown and gives it back to him. And he just smacks her. Oh. And he's like, how dare you? And then he just gets gutted. Like, one of the yeah, people yeah. that comes over. So, uh, the main, like, general that had taken over goes over and says, like, you can come to Noxus, Where your actions, your words, how you act are more matter than where you were born. And she becomes a part of the army and is actually, cool. you see her. Yeah. Later on, actually, one of the top generals. Wow! But a giant—it's a giant pot of yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't, I'm, just, I'm I'm picturing a molten metal like pot of exactly. Crowns. So it is not a matter of how you were born. Your station that you were born yeah. at is only your abilities. Are you a strong person? Are you have the personality? Do you have the ability to take over? I kind of like us. I kind of like this uh, this this world the most. Yeah, it's just, it looks pretty cool. I, I don't know, like I, I mean, I enjoy the characters from Arcane, but like it sounds really neat. And this is why a lot of people are excited for Arcane is because they don't. Ha- Arcane was a very good entry point. You don't have magic. Like I mean, you have anywhere. a little bit, right? You they, have a little bit, but you have it. You don't. Are you're not jumped into it? It's yeah. not like here's a bunch of spirits. It's like 
here's a world that you can kind of recognize. Here are some characters that you can get introduced to. Oh, there's a little dude over there. That's just normal. He's Heimerdinger. 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 That's normal. Yo, it's okay. I loved him. He, he was the baby Yoda to my heart for this show. He is. Yeah. I'm going to get into some things about his people no, in a bit. No, <laughs> don't. Don't kill it for me. I'm not. Heimerdinger is still fantastic. All right. But it's a great introduction because it gets you, like, it leans you into the magic without kind of going ham and being like, here's magic. It's, here's some technology. Here's some things you recognize. Here's some things that... It's kind of crazy how varied, in. like, the world is. Like, you know, you think Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, right? There's always this, like, you know, it's medieval, magic, Harry Potter, magic. This is sci, like, sci-fi, tech, Spartans, you know, mystical things. People with, like, you know, really, like, you know, big degrees of, like, you know, I th- what was that? What was that, um, that... That world that is very authoritarian and Noxus. Yeah, no, not Noxus. Um, it's the one that kills the mages. Or, Demacia. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it's interesting because, like, not you know, it's not just a single type of a theme. It's like they got a bit of everything. Exactly. So I've they, never seen that before. Because most of the time, you are in a lot of fantasy stories. You're focused on one area or one type of. Yeah, like, like that's what I'm used to, right? I'm yeah. just playing with magic. I'm just looking at sci-fi. I'm just looking at spirits, right? It's just. This because one's weird. Like, it's got a bit of everything. It is. And you have different areas, too, where there's another area to the south, which is, like, ruins and a desert, but it's very Egyptian-themed. Do we not get Our to various, that one? Um, I There's not much to it. Okay. When I was looking through, you have characters that come from there. I'd have to, like, explore exactly which characters are from there. For a later art. episode. For, for a later episode. But you also have a lot of spiritual-based stuff where technology is integrated with spiritual stuff and not just magic either. Um, Heimerdinger is a big case of that. He is a spiritual entity. In Arcane, he says he doesn't like magic. Yeah. But he doesn't like yeah. mages because he can. He knows the power that comes from it. But in particular, he is from Bandal City, which is in the spiritual realm, and it is just all yordles. Oh. They're... Like, very short. Mm. They have their ears. Mm. Uh, in some of the original lore, they were hiding themselves. So yeah. Heimerdinger would just look like a crazed old man with a big mustache. Yeah. Um, a Another one. I, oh, I can't remember his name right now. But he befriends Jinx eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, because they both love explosions. But he looks like a little round man. But in his, like, non... His real form, he's... It's like little cat looking thing. <laughs> yeah. They all have different vibes to them. Um, but they all are they just like joy and they live for a very, very long time. Like Heimerdinger is very, very old. Oh, I remember that, kid. yeah. He's like three hundred some years old. Yeah. Um these characters are also ones that people fucking hate. <laughs> Why? So in game you have Oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but he's like a scout for the Yordles. They basically, uh, like, he's kind of militaristic. He looks, he's like, eyes are closed. He's got like a little hat on. He looks like all happy-go-lucky. And he's like, I'm going to like go into the world and like protect everyone. And in the game, he's a monster. (laughs) So everyone hates him. I lost you, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um, Either way, they're all, they're very small. They are mischievous. They can come in and out of the spiritual realm and they try and work with uh, people when they find them. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's what I got from him, right? Like, um, I thought he was like, I don't know how to say. Don't forget the Gimp Yordle. The Gimp Yordle, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Is that one of Heimerdinger's kind? Yes, that's a Yordle. Oh, that's what you were trying to tell me. I couldn't figure out why you kept replaying the brothel scene. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> you were literally there, and I just went, Sona, look, Gimp Yordle. I know, I know. I just didn't register it. And also, I didn't know what a Yordle was until, like, this conversation. Yeah, they're cute. They're really, really cute. I mean, the Gimpy one was a little weird. It's a little bit weird. Yeah. That's a weird one. Kind of cute, though. Really cute. But... Again, that's 
you have this exploration of the world and they can expand out on it. They can go to Ionia if they wanted to make something China, basically. Um, if they want to do a pirate themed like season or so, they could do it in Io- in uh, Bilgewater. They have the exploration and the characters to do this. Now, the thing is, in game, you have these characters that come from a variety of places, but you also have skins that they'll add on to them. So they'll make the characters look different. Hmm. Same abilities, but they will look different. Take, for example, one recent one that came out was Star Guardians, which is anime uh, magical girls. But it's an alternate universe with the characters in it. Wait, what's the reason for the skins? To sell them. Oh, this is like a DLC. So, League of Legends yeah. is free to play. Oh, really? Anyone can play it. Okay. For free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to unlock some things, but play as much as you want for yeah. free. But if you want skins and unique, like character customization you have to pay for it yeah it makes sense that's how most games are run right yeah Yeah. or you can like have played for long enough to get the extra stuff yeah they were one of the first ones that do it and their monetization was well enough that they are able to pay for arcane they're Mm -hmm. able to pay for all these different things there's one well i mean it got so popular that this like entire event has been broadcasted league of legend like worlds Worlds. (laughs) and what's funny i didn't know that's a thing i will say this as I should have uh, put this expressly at the beginning. I have never played League of Legends. Yet you know so much about it. The reason I know so much about League of Legends without playing League of Legends is because everything around League is really good. The game itself is toxic as fuck. Drop the F-bomb. I will. But... That's what happens. You have 12-year-olds that are in there learning new slurs because everyone is aggressively screaming at you. Why are you going top? Why the hell are you in jungle? Stay mid. Stay mid. Go bottom, you piece of shit. I have no idea what you're saying, but I mean, I I agree. The story sounds really cool. I've never played the game. I mean, of course, I'd never play the game. I I barely hear the story. But um, like, like, I mean, from what I've seen, it sounds like a really cool world. Yeah, they have... uh, the thing is why I say everything around is because for the last eight years, especially since 2014, they have put out new cinematics every single season mm-hmm. uh, and new story tidbits. Uh, they have music that goes along with the, each individual one or new events. And they oh are Oh my God, gorgeous. I'm picturing, what's it called? Imagine Dragons is the most recent one, didn't they? What's it Imagine Dragons? Who did the uh, most recent? So the most recent one oh, no, was, was Lil Nas. Lil Nas, yeah. No, but the one before. One before. I don't know who did the song before. I think it was um, Two Way. Was it Two Way? No. no. But they have... I will show you a couple of them after this episode because yeah. I don't want to just like make this a reaction thing. But they're all amazing. And you can tell a lot of the history. One of the first ones they did was actually for Jinx. Really? Yeah. No way. Um, there's a point in the in the show where she's like tinkering along and Silco is trying to get her attention the song that's playing is her song oh like each character has their own song not all of them but they released her when they brought her into the game they made a song for her and a cinematic for her okay they have a song for Vi as well when Vi came out yeah Um, but not every character gets that kind of treatment Jinx and Vi just happen to be very special. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they have an entire show around them. They do. But this, it, the other thing that's really exciting about it is that some of these characters that were in Arcane are not at the state where they are in the game. So there is one particular character that in the game is a crazy, maniacal Russian man. He wants to find the great evolution. He wants to ensure that he, like, he is fully mechanical um, and he wants to take people that are sick and make them better. Evolve them. Make them mechanical. Wasn't he the cave guy? That is singed, okay. but that is not this person. Okay. He is wholly, in the game, he is wholly evil. He's laughing. He wants like destruction. That is Victor. 
Victor was the, the other the, scientist, right? Yeah, the yeah. cripple. Yeah. So his story in Arcane is much better than any of the other stories because yeah. you see him this, he's sweet. Yeah. He's really sweet and he just wants to do science, but he's crippled. He's going to die. His story is really good. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they know a little bit about the game or a little bit about the lore, it makes the story a lot more interesting because it's like, how the hell does this person go from point A to point B? <laughs> Never thought about it that way. I mean, I only ever played my, like, I mean, my definition of video gaming was Pokemon and uh, and Zelda, but I never thought about it as in the story because I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the game. Yeah, and that's... So, like, that's why when you came to me and you told me, I'm going to teach you about lore. I'm like, what the heck is lore? And why do I care? Lore is a lot. And like, like you saw, the Wikipedia page just for the continent. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting because, like, you know... And... Each area has the same level of detail. Yeah. Some of the characters, their like blurbs so, of their background are like a full paragraph. They're short stories explaining who they are. Yeah. There's all of this that has been built around it to give. It uh, g- gives you a lot more involvement and a lot more to for explore. For video games. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, League is a huge one for this. I don't know. I, I just find it so like. I find it really incredibly hard to believe that there's this much story for a game. Like, it sounds like it needs to be a series. And that's what they're trying to do now. So that's why in, they were bought out by a Chinese company, I think Tennyscent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might put it up in the video if I'm wrong. But um, they were bought out from them. And they were bought out in a way of, like, you are going to do things our way. They said hey, invest in us. We want to build a world. We don't want to just build new games and build out League of Legends. We already done that. We just want investment to build out the world. And that was in 2014, 2015. And that is what they've been doing since is making Arcane, making um, The Ruinous King, which is another, like an RPG game. They have a card game, kind of like Magic the Gathering, but (laughs) on mobile. Uh, Legends of Runeterra? Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, but they're building more of the world out and they're building in more stories. And I don't think Arcane is the last series or is going to be the only series they do. Yeah, it's crazy. They build a big world. Yeah. I will show you some cinematic I mean, Each stuff area too. of this world that you describe could be its own series. It could be its own game. It could be its own like story. And they're just all there needs yeah. to be is a little bit of like hints to one or the other events interacting with one another. Mm-hmm. Like an arcane Noxus is potentially knocking on Piltover's door because they're like, knock, knock, you're weak. Fuck you. I'm coming in. <laughs> like, that's why Mel's mom is there. Yeah. Mel's mom is great. She's my favorite. It's one of my favorites. Oh, man. I remember the tub scene where she just sitting <laughs> the, there having all these young men, like, you know, just like Massage waiting. her. Oh, she, man. Has her, she has her wine. Oh, she's got, it was amazing. She's got a thing over her she eyes. She was and she's jacked just AF. So jacked. Big muscle mommy. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, that rubs some people the right way. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> so that's all, uh, give you a very brief overview of Runeterra of the League of Legends lore. That was a brief overview. That was a brief overview. Ah, shit. (laughs) I do want to go in a little bit more detail of specific areas. This might do specifically Piltover and some of the champions that have come from there. And do that for different areas to give you an idea of each one. And I can show you a little bit about the characters, how they look, and all that. Okay. Yeah. And this would be like future episodes, eh? These will be definitely future episodes. Sounds good. There's a... Like you noticed, there's a lot. (laughs) And remember, League, actually a funnier thing too, League is smaller than Warhammer. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, God. As I'm looking at all of your miniatures on the wall. Yep. Dear God. Warhammer is bigger than League. In no, terms I know of 40k lore. is pretty big. I still don't know what 40k is though. 40. I just know it's miniature dolls that we can paint and play games with. 40k is the granddaddy of lore. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll get into that in another episode. That's we are doing one. a 40k episode, I hear. Eventually. Take us out. So that's our episode for today. 
Uh, thanks, Nick, for taking me through the small tidbit of the world of League of Legends. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, wow. I mean, <clears throat> League of Legends. <laughs> now, if you guys like the podcast, please follow. Please subscribe. You're more than welcome to. Check out the links down below if you want to support us. And we will see you next week. Have a good day. Bye.